Hi folks, it's Florida Man here. Today I'm bringing you my thoughts on what I'd consider a rather underplayed alliance in diplomacy, and a strong one. You could say that my reason for making this video is that the Wintergreen Alliance is worthy of more of all of our consideration. So let's discuss how this alliance works, what the pros and cons of this alliance are, how long it typically lasts, and whom it benefits most in execution. For those who are unfamiliar, the Wintergreen Alliance in Diplomacy is an alliance between Italy and Russia. The Wikibooks article on Diplomacy Alliances describes the Wintergreen Alliance as follows. Italy and Russia fit together well. The two can make short work of Austria and continue into Turkey. Italy must work to get a fair split of the centers, but Italy has a greater potential for quick growth working with Russia than with Austria. This description actually, for me, might explain why the alliance is underplayed. The description of Italy and Russia working together against Austria and then Turkey is frequently accurate. However, proceeding that way requires that Italy put a lot of faith in Russian intentions. If Turkey, Russia, and Italy all attack Austria more than half the time, the result of that is Italy gets mowed over by a powerful juggernaut alliance that Italy has helped to feed. For that reason, my general preferred plan in employing the Wintergreen Alliance as Italy is that Austria, Russia, and I destroy Turkey, we then get Austria to commit units in the direction of Germany or to leave one or two key centers on the border with Italy and or Russia empty, and then Russia and I divide Austria in a similar manner to how the Juggernaut would do it. Allowing Turkey to grow, in my opinion, is a mistake in this alliance, and it undermines the alliance's likelihood of survival. If you work the alliance more along the lines I describe, I believe it tends to increase the likelihood of the alliance enduring. That may be a hard sell to Russia, but if Russia doesn't accept it, you can always work with Austria instead. As for the pros of this alliance, I would say there are a number of them. There's the meta pro, which is that any alliance involving Italy tends to be at least a bit underestimated, because it's not exactly a secret that Italy starts out as the weakest diplomacy power. There's the fact that in actual power, this alliance is very similar to the Juggernaut, one of the strongest alliances to have ever been developed, and a very widely discussed alliance. For that reason, when Russia and Italy work together, they both typically end up at or near the top of the board, unless one of them eliminates the other. And it's worth noting that the primary difference between this and the Juggernaut is that with Italy as a partner instead of Turkey, Italy's home centers are closer to the front line with the Western enemies than Turkey's are, which is a pro, and Italy's home centers are further from Russia's which should make stabbing more difficult for both parties to the alliance, and therefore cause it to be a longer-lasting alliance. Another pro is that if Italy and Russia are working together, Turkey and Austria won't usually see it coming. And even if they do, it'll be more difficult for them to effectively combine against Italy and Russia than it would be for Austria to work with Italy or for Turkey to work with Russia. For the Eastern powers, I would say the counterplay options against Wintergreen are weak. One con is that, just like the Juggernaut, the Wintergreen Alliance can be stopped by the Western powers working together, although that is less likely to happen than with the Juggernaut, because Wintergreen is less common and less likely to be perceived for the threat that it is, especially with skillful diplomacy by the parties to the Alliance. And it's worth noting that unlike Turkey, Italy has a fair likelihood of having significant influence in the West early on, simply by virtue of where Italy is positioned. Another con of the Wintergreen Alliance is that it might take a while to consume Turkey and Austria. However, all you need to do to overcome that downside is ensure you have some influence in the West, and either the Western powers must be held back by constant fighting, or one of them is allied to the Italians and or Russians. In short, the cons to this alliance are not very significant. The big winners to this alliance are Russia and Italy, naturally. Naturally. However, I think it's worth noting that one of these two tends to be a bigger winner than the other. Assuming Italy gets Russia to take Turkey out before they fight Austria, Italy tends to benefit from the alliance more than Russia. Even if the two end up being equivalent in power, which can happen, that means that Italy transitioned from a third-rate power to a first-rate power, while Russia simply remains a large and influential country. Russia benefits almost as much as Italy in this case, but if the alliance begins by eliminating Austria, Russia benefits much more, gains a lot in terms of leverage and the ability to flip to the juggernaut instead if that's desired. So if the alliance is executed the way I recommend, Italy is the big winner, and Russia is the second biggest. If it's executed the way Wikibooks claims it's supposed to be, I think Russia is the big winner, and Italy is hopefully the second biggest winner. The biggest losers are Austria, Turkey, Germany, France, and England, in that order. 
England, Germany, or France could end up being a winner if they become the ally of the wintergreen players, although I think that is either a product of strong luck or strong diplomacy. If the wintergreen allies are looking for a third ally, I might suggest that all else being equal, Germany is a good choice since it should be able to help against both France and England, and Germany should be easier to stab than either of the others. In this alliance, though, the only winners are probably Italy and Russia. In short, I think the Wintergreen Alliance is a powerful and effective option that w deserves more consideration. I think it is probably the strongest alliance possible, the optimal alliance, for early and mid-game Italy. Once Italy decides it has outgrown the alliance, stabbing Russia is probably going to be easier than you'd expect. Russia's defenses over land tend not to be as strong as Italy's in this alliance, in my opinion, unless Russia just has more units available in the region than Italy does. The only issue, which I sort of alluded to, is that Russia has options that may, on balance, benefit Russia more than the Winter Green, since the Winter Green, if executed properly, empowers Italy more than it does Russia, since Russia is already the strongest country statistically. I tend to think that Juggernaut is a better choice, for instance, if I'm playing Russia and I have the option of deciding between these two choices and I like both players equally. But that may not be a decisive shortcoming. It depends on the individual circumstances of your game. I hope you've enjoyed this strategic overview and found it to be of some value. If so, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and check out more Floor Demand Diplomacy videos. The names on the screen now represent other individuals who have found ways of contributing a little extra. So if you feel you've received exceptional value here, I hope you'll consider joining their ranks. Until next time, Floor Demand, out.